Good morning, my fellow Africans and the world at large. This is Emmanuel Okejo Mensah once again, coming into your homes and your minds with a message of empowerment and enlightenment all the way from Ontario, Canada. Today is the 19th of September in the year 2022, and the Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. And for that matter, I take this opportunity to invite the whole world, any man or woman, listening to me or hearing my voice, to join me to give thanks to God for the day that he has granted unto us. And life in general, life is beautiful, life is wonderful, life is glorious, life is God himself flowing through all things, including mankind. Today, I am going to speak to you on the topic, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. And this topic is one of the Ten Commandments in the Bible. And actually it's the Sith Commandment. We are given the command that thou shalt not kill or we shall not kill. Yes, as I've always been saying, the Bible is a metaphysical book. And it has its interpretation based on the figures and the symbols that have been used to present the truth in the Bible. And as I said in my previous episode, that regardless, however you interpret the Bible, you will get something out of it. But it's also a universal truth that many people go to the sea and some only float at the surface of the sea and therefore they can only talk of the experience of swimming on the surface of the sea but they don't go deep others actually travel long distance to why that when they drop themselves they go deep and therefore they are able to view and experience what is in the deep and so the bible is a vast body of sea or ocean that we are all accessing depending on the level at which you want to go you, you want to go deep or dive deep to discover and so our purpose is to discover the truth hidden in the bible by the use of the biblical symbols and characters and today we are looking at the ten commandments that was given to moses according to the bible to be given to the people of israel and if you look at the Ten Commandments, the time it was given, Moses was leading a group of people out of slavery in Egypt into a promised land. And they were going through a lot of difficulties. They have to travel for years, years, years so before um, they would reach wherever they were going. And in between, there were a lot of things going on. And so God, or Moses, had the idea and created these laws and gave to the people by their universal truth. Moses knew the universal principles. Therefore, he wrote this uh, commandment based on the universal truth. So he was inspired by God to give this to his people. But Moses was only using it to take the people out of one point to the other. And also he had in mind of their general well-being. And therefore, if they are able to know the, uh, the meaning of the biblical symbols and characters that they are used, then they will be able to organize their life. So if you look at the Bible, it is written in such a way that people who understand it, people who really know what the Bible is saying, the game, they have never been failures. They are always successful. But only those events that are carrying the Bible and only making noise, we are more of noise makers, Use that we use the Bible, we get nothing out of it. And so today, we are going to position ourselves as people who have the understanding, who are, have the deep uh, desire to know and to experience the deep of the sea. And therefore, we are not going to float on the surface of the sea, but we are going to dig, uh, dive deep into the bottom of the sea. And there that we will see all the beautiful things the wonderful things, the, all the creatures that lived 
in the sea. And so when the Bible says thou shalt not kill, generally or naturally, we are talking about killing human beings. And so the Bible is saying that we shall not kill one another. Now, as a matter of fact, the human being by nature is someone that preserves life. It is only when people have gone to a certain level that they begin to kill one another. And so in our lifetime, only one out of a hundred people that will actually think of killing another person. The 99 people will always think of preserving life. And so when we look at thou shalt not kill, though it actually speaks to this surface meaning, it also has its deeper meaning. Because at the end of the day, only a few people are doing this killing. Unless, of course, when we have these wars, that men and women take the guns and they kill each other. And apart from that, in our ordinary lives, we don't normally see people killing each other indiscriminately. But it's only a few people that they go up to a certain level in their thinking, and therefore they go up to that, uh, uh, they, they allow negativity to take control of their consciousness, and therefore they go on to kill someone. And so we are going to look at the thou shall not kill, not from the perspective of human beings killing each other, but we are looking at it from the higher perspective. And I, as we all know, we are spiritual beings, we are mental beings, we have our mental world. Every man or woman has his own kingdom that he is managing. And so thou shall not kill is actually applicable. That is why it is applicable in truth. And if you don't kill in your mind, you will actually not kill another human being. All the things that leads to we killing another, someone killing the, uh, the other person, is as a result of our inability to, I mean, manifest what God has deposited in us. But as we think of not killing what God has given to us and enhancing them and bringing them out, there will be no need for us to actually go into an uh, argument with someone such that the person will take a gun or a knife to kill you. And so thou shalt not kill. We all know, as I said, only one out of a hundred people will kill a human being. I will not even say one. One out of a thousand people will kill a human being in our lifetime, deliberately. But the thing that we kill all the time that there is no human being that is not doing is the killing of our God-given purposes, God-given dreams, ideas in our minds. So if you see that thou shalt not kill, it is though being uh, presented as, as if it is about the killing of human being, it goes deeper than that. There is no human being on, earth, on, on this earth that has never killed an idea that came to him or her. There is no human being on this earth that has never received an idea, has never received an impulse, a push to do something better, beautiful, for himself and all other people. But instantly, some people kill it right away. Some people to begin to nurse it. And at a point, they suffocate it and kill it. And this is the killing the Bible is talking about. Thou shalt not kill. You must not kill your God-given purpose. You must not kill your God-given dreams. You must not kill your desires. Whatever that is on your heart, whatever that is urging you to do something beautiful, wonderful for yourself and all the people around you, that is God speaking through you. God has given you a human being to work with. God has given you an idea in your mental world. Your thoughts are your brothers and sisters and whatever. And so when the idea comes, do not kill it, do not sit on it, but, uh, but develop it. Nurse it, nurture it and nurse it and let it grow. Give it the freedom to grow to become a blessing to men and women everywhere in the world. And so thou shalt not care is not necessarily about the killing of one another. The human being is so uh, is, 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 a, 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 is, is a being that has a human heart that naturally 
we don't kill one another indiscriminately. But the thing that we kill indiscriminately, our ideas, our dreams. In a day, men and women kill more than 10 or 20 dreams and ideas that can, comes to them. In a year, the dreams and things that men and women receive, ideas that they receive and kill them are uncountable. And so thou shalt not kill today. We are looking at it from this deeper perspective. And as I said, we are not just floating on the surface of the sea or the ocean. We are going deep. And the deeper part is what I'm presenting to you. The, the Ten Commandments, the safe one, is about your mental world and your dreams, your ideas, your, 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 your purpose on earth here. Every human being on earth here has a purpose. There is something that God has placed in you that you are the only person that can do that thing and do it better than any other person. And if you're able to identify this thing in you and follow it, nurse it, nurture it and nurse it and allow it to grow, it will expand to put you on the top of the world. And the many people will enjoy, will benefit from that particular purpose for which you are on this earth. That is the truth. But what are we doing? We are killing them every day. We are killing them every day. There is no human being, as I've already stated, that has never killed an idea that came to him or her. There is no human being that has never suffocated a dream that he had. But if we are looking in our lives, only once in the blue moon that we hear that Another person has killed his fellow. Only once in a blue moon. Or only once in a while. And so if you look at that, it is not the laws that we have that necessarily makes men and women not to do that. But it is by our own nature, our enlightenment. And even when people go into this, majority of them actually regret what they have done. But men and women don't normally even remember the dreams and the goals that ideas that God has given to them and they kill them. And so when we talk of indiscriminately killing things, ideas, then that is what we are doing in our minds. And that is what the Bible is asking us, that we are spiritual and mental beings. And therefore, whatever thing that comes to you from God, that is your brother, that is your sister, that is your fellow human being, in the spiritual or mental world, embrace it. Nurture it, nurse it, give it every uh, positive and the right condition. That is you thinking in a positive way and making sure that this thing will grow to become a bigger thing that will bless humanity. In that case, you are someone who is not killed and that you are obeying the, the Ten Commandments, which is, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. And so this is what we're supposed to be looking at. The Bible has deeper meaning. The Bible is a, is, is a book that contains universal truths. And we are not supposed to be scratching just at the surface of it. And if we understand this and we obey this commandment, we will see that in our lives, men and women will no longer sit down and believe other people that they are the cause of their wars. But we will be awakened to the truth that we are given powers and ideas, purpose, for us to nurse and nature, nature and nurse all this and allow them to grow. And when you have this idea, when you understand this principle, you go on and be careful and you do you will disease from you will dis, you, you, you will no longer be killing your ideas, the purpose for which you are here. Poverty, lack. All the suffering and pain we are, we, are, we are experiencing on earth here is as a result of we going against this commandment, thou shalt not kill. There, is, there are consequences at times to the killing that we do. Yes, you, the idea is there to come and save you. It's come to help you to liberate yourself from a particular situation, particularly poverty and lack. And as soon as you sit on it and you kill it, there is a consequence for that, and that is the poverty, the lack that you experience in your life. But if you stand firm and embrace it 
and respect that this is my purpose. This is what I want to do. Therefore, I am going to stay on it and do it and do it. And I know with the power of God in me, I am going to succeed and you go on to achieve it. Then you eliminate poverty. You eliminate lack. You eliminate scarcity in your life. And so thou shalt not kill today. You might have heard of it. You might have heard many preachers, many sermons from the acclaimed preachers that only concentrate on the killing of your fellow human beings. Yeah, it is true. It is good. We have to preserve life. We have to respect life. Therefore, we don't have the right to kill. But on top of that, there, is under, there are other killings that we are doing every day. And this is what we normally neglect in our lives. And if you are able to look at this from this perspective, and everyone is only minding his, his or her own business, looking for his own purpose, he's looking, uh, following his own dreams, believing that he's a creator, he goes on to create. There is no confusion between men and women. That competition that we are looking with, that is, it brings us to a point that we want to kill one another, will no longer be in existence. And then you see that by obeying this law, this commandment in the, from the metaphysical perspective, in your mind, and allowing whatever thing that is in your mind comes out to bless humanity, you save men and women from actually going to kill one another physically. And so thou shalt not kill my brother, my sister, whoever is listening to me. Do not just leave or accept this commandment on the basis that we should not kill. Now, that is the surface. But you are doing countless killing every day. And today, it is my call to bring your mind to this. It is my duty to bring your mind to this truth that launch onto the deep. Go further and try to deduce the true meaning, let the Spirit uh, I mean, uh, 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 reveal the truth to you that are hidden behind these words. Yes, it is beautiful. It is human morality that we should not kill one another. But on top of that, we are also not to kill our ideas. We are also not to kill our dreams. The purpose for which we are here, we must look for it and make sure we, 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 we grow it and allow it to bless us and bless humanity. And that is when you are obeying this commandment. The killing we are talking of is not about only human beings. What are your dreams? What are your goals? What is your purpose on life here? Or on earth here? What is your purpose in life on earth here? Are you just the one that is going from one end to the other, only thinking of acquiring one, one or two um, properties or one or two, uh, yeah, one or two things that you call your property, and only leave the to and fro life, and one day you exit this world, and then that is it? No, that is not what you are brought up here. It is the animals that live that kind of life. They get something here, they eat, sleep and wake up. They get something here, they eat the following day. So they go above. They don't actually do anything by the use of their mind to improve their own lives and the life of other people. But as a human being, we are made in the image and the likeness of God. And God created us all of us here. God brought us all of us here to continue his creation. And the only way you partake in God's uh, holy creation is by knowing your purpose, identifying your purpose, and following that purpose, that it will become a reality in your life and in the life of other people. Then, <clears throat> we liberate ourselves from poverty, the pain, the suffering that we are going through. And so if you look at your life, you look at our lives, all of us, we are not prospering. We are not being successful because we are killing, we are doing this killing, we are going against this safe commandment, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. We are going against it. Now, as a matter of fact, it is in the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. You can refer to it. Or you can do your own analysis after this. Read the, the whole uh, Ten Commandments. But when you go to the safe one, I want you to ponder over it. 
So you must not kill. You must not kill your ideas in your mental world. You are a king. You are a commander. You are everything in that, in that kingdom. And therefore, you are supposed to protect lives in your mind. Protect lives in your consciousness. And therefore, every good idea, every good purpose, every good thing that God drops into your mind, do not leave it to die. Do not purposely kill it, but purpose in your mind and follow that idea, follow that dream, and let it be a blessing to you and mankind. That is why we say you are not killing, you are obeying the commandment. At this stage, we are no more in the wilderness. We have human beings that are living in mansions. We are human beings that are using sophisticated things to make ourselves be lively, beautiful, and wonderful to enjoy our lives. And therefore, we are so advanced that we even need a book to tell us that we shouldn't kill one another. But human beings, there is always the tendency, there's always the temptation that we sit on our ideas. Those ideas and everything that happens comes to you in your mind. No one is there to witness it. No one, no one has the right to see it. We don't have the privacy to add. You are the only person that have that right. That, that is your privacy. And therefore, that is where the killing is actually started. That is where your integrity is. Integrity is not about what we do on the outside, but it's about what we entertain in our mind. And so you, that is why men and women normally become uh, taken aback when they hear that someone that they consider to be uh, an upright person all of a sudden falls into a certain situation that he has committed a certain crime on that. And then we begin to say that, oh, this man doesn't deserve that. Is that no, that is not the truth. The person has already indulged in that behavior, in that attitude in his mind up to the point that it has become, it has, it has got to the point that it must reflect in the person's outer life. There is no way that a man or woman will fall into something without first entertaining it in his or her mind. And so integrity is not about what we show to the people. Integrity is what we, we entertain in our mind. And any man that holds the universal truth in his mind and knows that he is there to protect his ideas, he is there to protect his dreams, visions, and allow them to grow to bless mankind, doesn't actually play any tricks, does not do anything to deceive his fellow human being because he knows he's someone who is a creator. He knows where his power is. He knows that he is the controller of his own kingdom. And once he has his kingdom in the right state, all outer things will be all right. Will just be all right. That is the proof of life. The law of correspondence. Our life is a reflection. Your inner state will always be reflected in the outer. Some will take a lot of time before they become the, they, they, they reflect in your life. That is when they get to the maturity stage. But when we entertain the right thing in our lives, sooner or later, it will reflect in our lives that it will mirror what we have in our lives. And so, we are not supposed to care. My brother, my sister, there are countless ideas. There are countless uh, dreams. There are countless things that has passed through your mind. And today, the call on you is take a mental break and begin to pay attention to the dreams, the ideas, the impulses, the hunches, the intuition. Through your, you get all these things through your intuitions, your hunches and impulses. Begin to pay attention to them and don't just trample upon them. If you do that, you are killing. You are killing. You are going against the safe commandment of the Ten Commandments. But pay attention. Some of them may be faint. Some of them may be quite... Uh, no, they, 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 they are not feasible in the minds and the eyes of human beings. But do not worry. The one that is giving you that idea, the one that is giving you that purpose, knows how to open all doors, all closed doors, such that it will grow to become a giant tree that the whole world will see and the whole world will come and live under it to enjoy the shade and also eat from it. That is the truth. And so thou shalt not kill, my brothers, my sister, 
let us rise up. Let us begin. Let us become wise. And says that we are not. We will not kill. It is good for us not to kill one another. That is morality. That is what God requires us. We don't give life, and therefore we don't have the right to to to, to take life. But human beings, we are supposed to respect one another as the same spirit coming from the same source, and therefore. The killing of one another, it is not even in the equation of human beings when God created that. It is our own corrupted minds. It is we corrupting our own minds that has brought all these things in. But now, but as soon as we become conscious of this and we begin to organize our mental kingdom, believing and knowing that we are not in competition with anyone. When another person is being successful, when another person has succeeded in this area, Thank God. Rejoice with a person and believe in that you are also on your path. And therefore, yours will come and all the world will rejoice with you. And when you have this principle, you will be conscious of your own ideas. You'll be conscious of your own dreams and begin to, begin to work on them with one mind, with a focus and a purpose, with only one thing in mind that you are co-creating with God. And therefore, you bring whatever you are co-creating with God to the altar, to the glory of God, and for your enjoyment. So thou shalt not care. It's a universal truth. It is a commandment that all men must obey. And this is the time that we have to begin to walk in that direction. As you are listening to me, if you be sincere with yourself, if you be honest with yourself and you go back to take the notebook that you called your, your New Year resolution in the, at the beginning of 2022, you will see that you've already failed yourself. And then you, have, you haven't even achieved any of the resolutions. But as a matter of fact, we are not even talking about the resolution, but I'm using this as an example. But in your life, if you be honest with yourself, you see that a lot of ideas, even right now as you're listening to me, there is something on your heart, there is something on your mind that you want to do, but you are killing it. How do you kill it? You entertain negativity. Oh, I do not have capital. I do not have anyone to help me. I do not know anyone in the government. The economy is too hard. Then you go on and give excuses and excuses and excuses. Every excuse is a negative thought. Or it is a, a tone that is choking your idea. And as you surround these tones, you surround these weeds, uh, uh, you surround this idea with all these weeds, it, they choke it and kill it. And this is the killing the Bible is calling on us that we should not kill that. We should not engage in this killing. Thou shall not kill. It means, simply means that do not desert your ideas. Do not surrender your ideas, your dreams with negativity. Do not surrender your ideas and dreams with all kind of negativities. But continue to affirm, continue to pour all the positivity and great thoughts upon and surround this, uh, this idea with all these great things. And you will see that they will grow and become a blessing to all men and women around you and even the whole universe, the whole world. So a negative mind it's a killer. We kill our ideas. We kill our dreams with negativity. But we are not supposed to do that. Take control of your mind. Take control of your mind. Everything that you see on the outer is an illusion. It is, as a matter of fact, your creation through your negativity. And when you turn to positivity, you will recreate a new and a beautiful life such that what you see, what you experience in your life will no longer be in existence. But we are every day throwing negativity, wits, and tones around our ideas. And as we do that, they grow and then they choke the idea. The idea dies off. One day when you're watching the TV or in the news and you, see, you hear or you see someone demonstrating, showcasing what he has, he has created, which is similar to the idea that you have you have received, then you will see that when you say, "Oh, I should have been I should have been doing this," but because 
I don't have anyone because I was born into a poor family, because I was born in a village, because I was, I was born to this and that and that and that. No, that is simply you actually going on in the negative trend. You did not achieve that because you lack understanding of how things run in the universe. You don't really have to have any help. You don't really have to know how to do it. But you only have to believe, pour faith on it. And then you are not killing your dreams. You are not choking your dreams, your aspirations, your goals, your desires with tons and weeds. That is what we're supposed to be doing. And so, my message is to the world. But I will also appeal to my fellow Africans. This is the time that we have to begin to walk in this direction. Thou shalt not kill. Let us not carry this Bible. And always go into the church, uh, our church uh, buildings, dance and sing to all these uh, commandments and come and say that, oh, the Bible says we should not kill and therefore you are not killing human beings but you are every day killing your ideas. And what do you see? You become poor. As a matter of fact, if you go to Africa, the poorest places are the people in the church. Poverty is where you find uh, Poverty is the commonest thing in the church building because none of these people are the concept of the fact that the negativity they are pouring upon their ideas is another form of killing. And actually, that is what the Bible is saying. That is what the Bible is saying. Let us rise up. There are more that we can do. There are more that we can achieve as any other people have achieved. As a matter of fact, this principle, it doesn't matter whether you are a church, you are a Christian or you are whatever. If you take this principle and practice it in its totality, you will get exactly the results that is supposed to come to you. You must not kill your ideas. You must not kill your dreams. You must not kill the purpose for which you are here. These are your brothers. These are your fellow human beings in your mental world. And it is only when you work for the success, for the beauty, the growth of these, your brothers and sisters in your mental world, that is when they will reflect in your outer world. And you will see that you, all other great people will be, you'll be, uh, will be attracted to you because you are in sync, you are in alignment with those people. That is the truth. So the pain, the suffering that we are, we are going through as human beings on earth here is a self-created one as a result of our ignorance. And today, the truth and the wisdom has come to you. You have an idea, I know. You know, your, you know it. We all go through that. You have a beautiful idea. You have a beautiful idea. Now you know that when you pursue this idea, when you get this idea out, you, are, you, you, you have liberated yourself and you, all the generations to come after you, your entire family. But what do you do? You pour negativity upon it. Oh, I will do it next year. Now, you know, the job I'm doing, there is no way I can combine this and my job. There is no way this and that and that and that. So you pour negativity upon it. In that case, you are a murderer. You are murdering the children of God that are coming out of you. And you must, visit, you must run away from it right away. You must put a stop to that. The moment you begin to think in a negative way of the ideas, the dreams that comes to you, then you are murdering the children of God. Think of it wisely. No one is giving you this. You are just sitting down when they are dropping into your minds. Can't you see that they are from the universe? They are from God? Therefore, you must not kill them. Don't you see that whatever thing that passes through your mind, they are, your, they are children of God coming to you. You must not kill them. If I have given you the idea, if someone has given you the idea, then you may say that, oh, that is the person's thinking. But as a matter of fact, there are a lot of things that happens in our own minds that other people would never hear, other people would never see. And that is what we are talking about. That is what the Bible is talking about, that we should not kill the children of God. We should not kill this army of God in our minds, in our consciousness. But we should nurture them, we should nurse them, we should make them grow. We should put the fertilizer, we should put every, the manure, we should put every good thing around them and let them grow to become giant trees such that there will be a fruit in millions and thousands to bless you, you and the world. So the poverty and lack that we are experiencing, particularly Africans, is as a result of we not having this idea. 
we are so pious that we only think of what we read on the surface. What is it's of no use. Yes. For you to read that thou shalt not kill when you don't actually have it in your consciousness. But when you move it to another level, you know that you don't have to kill your fellow human being. At the same time, you don't have to kill your dreams and ideas. And therefore, you are supposed to protect them as you are protecting your fellow human being. You will see that your life will be prosperous. That is when the blessings of God will come to you. That is the truth. So Africans, my fellow Africans, whoever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever, whoever you are, wherever you find yourself, let us begin to control our mind. Let us begin to discipline our minds. And I mean, work with the truth, work with the universal truth that you are every day, every moment in time, every minute in time, receiving men and women that are your that is ideas, dreams, all these things that are coming through through your mind, through your feelings, are the children of God. And the moment you ignore them, the moment you allow them to die of air out of your consciousness, you are a murderer, and therefore you receive the consequences of that. And the consequences of that is lack. The consequences of that is poverty. The consequences of that is what? A poor and a wretched life. That is the truth. So when you come to the other part of the world, you will see that people are obeying these principles. Go to any part of the world. That we call advanced world. People are not killing their ideas. Every minute, every hour, you hear people showcasing their new ideas. Whatever they are bringing into the world, they receive the idea. Someone will say that I was just sitting down and this came into my mind and I followed it and this is what I have come out with. Someone also say that I was watching TV and this dropped into my mind and this is what I have come out with. And these are the people that are not murderers. They are not murdering the children of God, the gift of God that God is giving to them. But they are taking them and nurturing them and nursing them and they are bringing them into the world to bless themselves and mankind. Thou shalt not kill. That is what the Bible is talking about. If you are someone that you have a dream, you have an idea, that you are sitting on it, you are not even making it any effort, then you are a murderer in the mental and the spiritual world. You are murdering the children of God. And the, the, the result that you will see in your life is poverty, lack. Poverty and lack. Scarcity. Wretched life. And that is what is a true reflection of our continent and of our own lives. We have to improve our own existence. We have to improve our own lives. And this will not happen. Except, or this will not happen when men and women are every day ignoring what they are receiving in the spirit. This will not happen when men and women are ignorant about the matters of life. It will not happen. It is when men and women begin to walk and pursue their purpose on earth here and begin to pursue the ideas that they receive and that these ideas will come to transform our towns, will come to transform our lives. Transformation is a matter of gift from God. Every human being has mind and the ideas are free. They come to us. God is so general, they come to us. But the only people that will see these ideas reflecting in their life are those that are not murderers. Those that are, are actually embracing these ideas and allowing them to flourish. So Africans, we are, in, we, we, we are poor. Our lives are impoverished. Our cities are dilapidated. Our, everything is backwards because we are not. We are every day. We are every day killing the children of God that God has given to us. We are every day killing our dreams. We are every day killing our aspirations. We are every day killing whatever thing that God has dropped into our, our, our system, into our beings. And this is the time that we have to rise up. The Bible is a book. It's a metaphysical book. It is universal truth. They have deeper meaning. Let us now launch into the deep. We have been playing on the surface of this, uh, of this ocean of the Bible. All that we do is we take the Bible, we go to church, we dance, we come home, we throw the Bible somewhere. That is it. Sometimes people don't even read the Bible. It's only someone 
the call, the preacher man will come and read it, another person reading it, and he also talk after it. Then they do this and they go home. Now, the Bible is for you, it's a gold mine. The Bible is a deep ocean with every living thing that are in the, the deep of the ocean. Everything, if you don't so go under the ocean, that we see that it is another world, the sea world. And so it is with the Bible. And there are oceans, there are millions of truths, there are millions of things hidden behind in the symbols and characters used in the Bible. And it is our responsibility to launch the deep, to go to deep, as the divers go deep into the sea to discover. Let us begin to work in this direction so that we will have the thrill of accomplishment when we, get, we, we, we discover the truth. When we discover the truth and we use it to transform our life, that is when we can put our hands on our chest and say, yes, this is what we have done with our minds and God in us. This is what we have done. This is our land. This is our, our cities. This is our cities. This is our town. This is our communities. We are transformed. We are transformed to the glory of God. To the glory of God. Innovations, advancement is something from God. It's from the universe. It's from the spirit. And it is our responsibility to bring them out. So, as I bring my message to an end, I want you to take this message and ponder over it. Thou shalt not kill. In your lifetime, there is about 100% chance that you will not even think of killing anyone around you. And therefore, thou shalt not kill is not actually a commandment to you. But, if you do a proper analysis, you will see that even at this stage, you've killed countless ideas. You've killed countless dreams. You've killed countless uh, yeah, uh, purposes and other things in your life. You've killed them. And therefore, you are receiving the effect of that. And therefore, let us begin to work in this direction and begin to be awakened to the truth and go into the depth of the Bible so that we bring the good in ourselves. Thou shalt not care. It's a commandment to every one of us, not only to the murderers, it's to every one of us, that we must protect our ideas, we must protect our everything that comes through in our mind, and let them grow, and let them grow. That is preservation of the children and the gift of God. That God wants to bring them into the world through us. And that is when we become like the Bill Gates. That is when we become like the Henry Ford. That is when we become like the, um, all the great people that we know of. And that is when our cities will become like Hollywood. That is when our towns will become like uh, whatever we can think of. We talk of London. We talk of uh, uh, Paris. We talk of all the beautiful places that we go. It is because men and women allow these children of God to grow and to flow out of them. They didn't kill them, but they brought them into the world for the enjoyment of mankind. That is my message for you. Now, once again, may the overshadowing presence of God that keep the stars in the open such that they do not fall on us. And that keep the planets in the open such that in their orbits Signs that they do not clash with one another. But everything is well laid. There is order and harmony in the universe. That presence, that overshadowing presence, lead you, keep you, and guide you. Give you the open mind and the receptive heart. Signs that this message will push you. For you to become awakened to the truth. And for you to begin to protect to nature and nurse all the people, all the children of God that are in your consciousness, in your mental kingdom, such that they will spring out of you into your outer world and into our beautiful world. And then we will contribute to the beauty and the glory of our world, such that Africa will be transformed. Africa will be transformed through the ideas, through the ideas that God is bringing into the world through us. And that is when we can showcase our towns, we can showcase our cities, 
we can showcase everything that we have created on the African continent. That this is what we have done with the help of God in all of us. Once again, my name is Emmanuel Kujo Mensah. I am a co-founder of the Eagle Mentality Group. And at Eagle Mentality Group, we teach and propagate information about the power of the subconscious mind and the universal laws and principles. It is our determination to, to create or to raise a new group of Africans that think and do things in alignment with the laws of the universe, the laws and principles of the universe, such that we will no longer be murderers, killing our ideas indiscriminately, killing the children of God in us, in our consciousness, in our mind indiscriminately, but we are actually protecting them, putting positive thoughts, putting everything that becomes fertilizer, manure, everything that enhances their growth, so that they will grow and spring out of our consciousness into our outer world, and that becomes our true reflection for the outer condition of a person's life. It's literally linked to the inner states, to their inner state or to his or her inner state. And therefore, this is the time that we have to begin to work in our inner state so that our outer condition will reflect, will mirror the good and the beauty that God is putting into the world through us. As it is, Africa is a continent that is inhabited by only black people. It is our determination that all of us will begin to nurse we begin to nurture and nurse our purposes, our dreams, and our ideas, such so that it will reflect in our continent, that it will be an attraction to all men and women from all walks of life, so that we will have all children of humanity, every race, every background, living peacefully and joyfully on the African continent, enjoying the beauty and the glory of God and showing and demonstrating the glory of God as diversity. That is when we say, yes, indeed, we have created the true heaven on earth, on earth here, on the continent of Africa. Thank you, and God bless you.